before Charter Street, <laughs> and he said they needed uh, engineers that could do some uh, technical illustrations and write assembly manuals. So you were a double E major at No, Stanford? I was a mechanical engineering major. You were an ME, okay. ME. Uh, anyway, I, I was I was worthless writing uh, <laughs> electronic assembly manuals, so uh, John Bumer assigned me to work with Ken Pryor on recording heads. And I worked with uh, the tooling and uh, the head department then uh, for the next uh, nine years. Well, that was Ampex. the biggest problem were, the, were the, the quad heads. Well, the quad head, I didn't get into the video heads until about, uh, oh, 63 or 4, 62 or 3, I don't remember. Uh, I was working on longitudinal heads. Uh, Elmer Dino had the head department. Uh, the, uh, the video head department was uh, General Foreman was Ray Cathary and he was over in uh, in the circus building we called it at that time and uh, we moved over there and I took over the engineering group on the on the the digi the video heads they were they were coming out with the new uh, design called the mark IV and it had some uh, fancy aluminum castings, it was um, some new technologies. Uh, this was for the VR 1100, uh, the VR 2000 was came along a little, it was coming along a little bit later, uh, but, but it was a new head uh, with uh, a rotary transformer, uh, it had, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, higher technology things. And it, it also had some uh, some of the video correcting devices in it. But anyway, I worked. I did that until about '66, when I decided, through some management changes in the company, the corporation, I was gonna uh, maybe start something on my own. Uh, so I started Peterson Precision Engineering Company in the June 66, a one-man operation. In Redwood City? In Redwood City, and we're still going today. In Redwood City? Yes. Congratulations. And, and we have a hundred and some employees, and we're, we, but in the 70s we did a lot of work for Ampex. We did the, uh, we made a lot of the head parts. The uh, send us blocks they used for the uh, recording heads. Uh, we also made the air bearing motors for the recorders. We made about 15,000 of those for Colorado Springs. Uh, now our principal business is uh, medical device parts. Uh, we make parts for Honeywell. Uh, guidance devices used in smart bombs and other in drilling wells and other things. <laughs> so we're uh, we're still operating. So the business has really changed. In what respect? What's been the biggest change since you started? So you're talking about Ampex in, in your days? business. In or your my business? business? Yeah. Oh well, it's, we've gone to almost entirely CNC equipment. Although we still have a bunch of old fine, fine tool presses that are, uh, but but everything now is uh, CNC. Uh, the, I can't. Uh, in, in the old days, I could run three fourths the machines in the plant. Now I couldn't run ten percent of them. <laughs> I would wouldn't know, know wouldn't know how to turn them on. But uh, <laughs> now, uh, getting back to Ampex, any questions about those early heads? Sure. You mentioned send dust alloy. Can you tell us more about Alpha Sil was Alpha Sil was another name. It was a it was the make it was the magnetic material used for it had wear properties and. Remember, in video recording, wear was a big issue. The life of the the life of the rotary head was always a big issue. Is the tape too abrasive? Is can the heads wear? Long? So they uh, remember they did a lot of exchanging of the heads. Uh, that was a big big limitation of the whole quad head system. Alpha Sil is an acronym for aluminum ferrite silicon. Is that Correct. True? Yeah. And did you guys actually smelt and pour no, no, the metal? No, or? No. Oh no, there were only two people around that, that manufactured that and uh, 
uh, Sendust was a Japanese name, I think. I forget who Alphacil, uh, where we bought that, but uh, we bought ingots. They started off at Ampex as round, round ingots about uh, five inches long, uh, about an inch and a quarter diameter, and we would slice uh, slabs. slabs off. Yeah. Then, then we did get the, one of the manufacturers to go to a slab material later on that was much easier. We could grind it and, mm -hmm. and make little bars and, mm -hmm. and produce the little blocks. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, I don't know what happened to that material uh, at this point. <laughs> it's probably no longer used. No, there's but it no was, magnetic it was a, recording. <laughs> it, it, it was a mechanical mixture alloy. It wasn't a homogeneous uh, al solution. Uh, but you're right. It was al aluminum, uh, silicon, uh, and iron. Iron. Yeah, yeah a, a very tough material to deal with. Right. Uh, and but it had great abrasion resistance mm -hmm. and that was the uh, whole reason it was used right in, it's a, it's a very shiny chromey looking metal as i recall uh, uh, quite I different from uh from pure uh, ferrite i wouldn't define it. i wouldn't describe it as shiny or chromey it, it was kind of a dark uh a brittle uh, material uh, it didn't. It didn't look like any kind of steel that I know of. <laughs> it wasn't a steel okay. looking. It, it, it almost looked 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 like a powdered metal product. You know. I see. I see. So more of a centered product. It looked more like a centered product. I see. Yeah, and it was. And uh, uh, it. it, it uh, it was difficult to grind, mm -hmm. but uh, we, we, it could be done. Right. Could you walk us through the, the process of, of going from a slab to a finished head, um, just in general, uh, the, the mechanical steps? Well, the, the, uh, the pieces that we made were, were a, a block basically that was raised to, uh, with, with to produce a recording gap then it was wafered into a into a small disc that could be that would be lapped to a, a you know probably less than ten thousandths mm -hmm. of an inch thick uh, and then windings coils windings fine copper wire was uh, added to the to uh, the, the sections on each side and the, the, the tip was then mounted onto a little holder commonly called a shoe or a mm -hmm. whatever it was bonded on epoxied onto a uh, a a uh, piece that was then mounted either and, and this was true both for the helical scan devices as well as the quad heads they use a similar similar uh, technology uh, but it, but it was a there, there was a wafering machines that were developed by the semiconductor industry early on and those we those were used to 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 slice these blocks, these little brazed block assemblies into little small wafers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it was a very a very small intricate work. Most of the work was done under a microscope. So, you, but you don't remember Tony Mlinerick? I'm terrible with names. I am. Well, he, he, he was recruited, actually discovered by Charlie Wilson, who was over in uh, Neville, uh, Belgium. And he was a young engineer there that was being recruited by uh, some uh, some Near Eastern company that was, and I got, I I had a request to that, could we use him in our Redwood City facility uh, because they were going to lose him, and so we made a job for Tony and, and he came over he immigrated came over. He actually lived with me briefly. Uh, I, I remember he came to dinner the first night, 
the first uh, Christmas he was there, he brought a bottle of Slivovitz, which was a uh, very potent, <laughs> potent uh, liquor made from uh, prune pits. <laughs> and uh, you take one taste and you, you could taste it till the next morning, you know. <laughs> But uh, Tony and I were uh, friends. When I, I left Ampex in 66, he left, I think, a year or two later and started CMC. I see. Uh, yeah. And we kept in touch. We, uh, we, we worked on uh, projects we, together. There was another uh, helical scan company called uh, Cartridge Television, started up in San Jose, and we started... Uh, they wanted us to make the blocks for them, and uh, Rudy Hertz was a tool engineer that uh, I, I brought up. I brought up into manufacturing engineering, and he he was employed by Cartridge Television, and they had, so they came to us and said, make make the send dust uh, box for us. And we did that also. We made them. <laughs> Not only for Tony, but for Ampex as well as Cartridge Television. That was yep. okay. Well, thank Renee, you very much. You're welcome. Leonard. Thank All you right. very much. Good, good job. <laughs> we appreciate that.